Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Kodobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of the USI Submarine Pack, and ah yes, with USI in the name, you know this one's gonna be good, as it is of course being made by the wonderful forum user Rover Dude. and I am really excited to be looking at this mod today. If you guys remember, a while back we actually did look at a submarine mod pack, which was a whole lot of fun. I absolutely loved it because it gave us a new way to explore this wonderful game and I'm really happy to be seeing more mods coming out that are taking advantage of the great new water physics, well, new water physics at least in the game and well with Rover Dude throwing his hat into the ring it just makes it even better so let's jump right on into the space plan hangar and take a look at the parts that are added in by this particular mod now at the moment uh, there are 12 individual uh, parts which if we look in the manufacturers tab Rover Dude did of course use the Umbra Space Industries tab in here wonderful always good and we have the 12 parts in here all of which are built to create this otter submersible and you can build it in a large variety of different ways with all the parts you have here which is quite cool so let's just go ahead and look at some of the parts the first of which of course being the oh so important submersible pod and this let's actually get a good look at it first is gorgeous oh I absolutely love the modeling and the texturing on this thing it is quite cool we do of course have lovely lights it does hold quite a bit of electric charge it has a built-in RCS reaction wheel it has its own built-in energy generation where it uses uh, enriched uranium and outputs a depleted fuel and xenon gas and of course creates electric charge in the process and overall, it's just a wonderful little thing. It's quite a cool little pod, a one-person pod, of course. You're not really going to squish many Kerbals in this thing. But uh, just as usual with most of Rover Dude's mods, you have the good detailing. I love the little radioactive symbol because, of course, this thing is fueled by enriched uranium, which, oh boy, nuclear submarine. That's, that's always fun for our Kerbals to have. It's just, just quite a nice quality part. Very, very cool indeed. Now the next body part we'll have a look. Actually, we'll just start up at the top here and work our way down for the rest of them. Uh, the first here is the Aquatic Sampler Collector, which really doesn't have a use yet, but it's eventually going to be a scientific experiment of sorts. So let's just attach it to the side here, zoom in, and you can extend it. And it's basically a uh, net that you scoop through the water collecting things. I can't wait to see it actually collecting science, but for now it's just a cool little part that you can retract and extend. Very cool indeed. Now the next bit is a buoyancy compensator and uh, it is, well, another liquid intake and also has lead inside of it as well to help uh, with well, weighing you down. Problem is with this part, I have yet to be able to attach it to anything. So I think this part may be uh, kind of still in the works, which I should actually mention. This whole mod is still very much a work in progress, but it's just so much fun and so cool I had to take a gander at it. But yes, this part basically will help with buoyancy down the road. You have ballast so you can take in water to help, uh, you know, weigh down your submersible and you can also put lead in here as well which will help weigh down your ship and then you can eject the lead to sort of quickly go back to the surface once you have your ballast all sorted out it's quite nice now the next part we have is the otter crew cabin which if we attach back here you'll notice a shroud pops up when we disconnect it it is flat on both sides and it's one of the interesting things, uh, Rover Dude really took advantage of shrouds for several of the parts here, and I do kind of like that. It adds that rounded body to the submersible, which is quite cool, and, well, it's... It's a crew cabin. <laughs> so that's, that's what it is, folks. But again, the usual quite nice texturing, a very cool mo modeling. I love the C-Lab bit in there. Very cool indeed. Uh, for now, no extra bits of information. Perhaps in the future with a name like C-Lab, maybe it'll have some science attached to it. That would be quite nice. Now the next thing we have is the Otter Dive Plane. And this is, of course, uh, you know, your control surface for underwater. And this will help you... Uh, well, it's the dive plane, so it'll help you go up and down, etc. Very good part, and I like the little trident on it. 
quite cool. Very nice indeed. Next part is the Otter High Powered Spotlight. And, well, it's a uh, spotlight. Yeah, you turn it on, it's a light. <laughs> That's really all there is to it. But it is a, quite a good little spotlight, very effective. And good for adding on to the sides of the craft, because you've already got pretty good, powerful lights going forward. So it's nice to maybe have these pointing down or around to the sides, etc. Uh, a good use. Now the next is the Otter Inline Ballast Plate. Now this is similar in nature to this Buoyancy Compensator and two of the other parts we'll have a look at in a minute. Now what this thing is, is it has a big tank to hold in liquid as well as lead that it'll be stored in the tank here. And like I said earlier, you can fill ballast so it fills with water so that you help sink the craft and then you release the ballast to have it go back up and if you want to go up more quickly Quickly, you can dump all the lead out of this thing and it'll just, you know, lose quite a bit of weight and you just go to the surface. And this is, of course, an inline ballast, so you don't have to worry about uh, the sides or anything, which, of course, we do have side ballast tanks here we'll have a look at momentarily. And yeah, it's just a nice little inline ballast plate. Very good. Typical modeling and texturing for this one. We then have the Otter R125 inline propeller, which is, of course, the main engine for this particular model, or uh, submersible, rather. Very, very cool, very well modeled, and, of course, produces glorious bubbles out the back when you are going through the water. And uh, it is an electric engine. It doesn't require any air intakes, but it does have intake liquid, uh, which is interesting. And its max thrust is 100 kilonewtons atmosphere, engine ISP of 6400 atmosphere. And it says 6400 vacuum, but I mean, that's not really a thing for this because it's a submarine. You're never really going to be in vacuum. But yes, it does, of course, have its own liquid intake to, uh, you know, serve as... Well, essentially, it works like a jet engine, but underwater, and it's a propeller. Good times, good times. Now, we also have these little radial, radial, oh god, what is it called? Impellers, I think they're calling them? Yes, radial impellers. And these have a thrust of 10 kilonewtons, so nowhere near the power of this. They're more for maneuverability. Uh, they're quite good in that regard. And you know, good for putting along the sides of the craft for a little bit of extra oomph. And they have similar ISP of the 6400. And yeah, yeah. Use barely any electric charge at all. And now the main, the main engine, still doesn't actually use a whole lot of electric charge. 0 0.002 per second max. So uh, with the reactor turned on for this thing, generating the electricity from the enriched uranium, you can go for quite a while in this thing. I have actually yet to run out of fuel, or electric charge rather, with the submersible I've been playing with so far. Uh, but yes, those are the two engines for this particular mod. Now the next is the Otter Radial Ballast Tank. And this one holds a lot more uh, water on the interior as well as lead inside of it than the inline or the buoyancy compensators. And one of the fun things, like if you set the stuff back here where it takes advantage of the shroud for there, that little pylon that attaches it to the craft is also a shroud. If we actually pull this off, you can see we don't have that little connecting point, but if we click it on, boom, we have a little shroud that attaches it, which is quite nice. I, I like the uh, use of that as a means for connecting things. I think it's quite cool. Now, you will also notice it does have two connection points on the side, which is interesting, but actually quite useful because it all depends on what you build off of the back of this thing. But you can kind of uh, set this thing a little bit lower and you'll see it is uh, angled on the shroud there. And when it is in this lower state, it actually lines up with the uh, attachment points on the side for, uh, say, the crew cabin or, of course, this inline ballast plate so you could attach more to the back over here. And, yeah, it's just nice because you have the two different attachment points on there so you can kind of give it your own little feel like maybe you want it to be a little bit off-centered. It might be your thing. And there you go. And, again, it holds quite a bit of ballast water and has 250 lead you can dump out of this thing. And if you do want, you can turn off the shroud for some reason. I, I don't know why you'd want to, but but you can. That's a thing. 
<laughs> All right, so let's pull that off. Now the next part we have is the Otter Rudder, and this functions similarly to the uh, dive plane at the front, but this of course is for your side-to-side -side movement. And again, you have the nice little trident on there, very cool. And the final piece is this Otter Ventral Ballast Tank, which is an interesting one, as you can uh, attach it to multiple places on the ship, really. I mean, it seems to me it's designed to go up front here. Honestly, I haven't been using these this thing. Uh, when I've been flying around on my little submersible, I've found that with this one attached, my submersible tends to flip a lot. That just may be my incompetence. That's a... Uh, <laughs> That's always a safe bet whenever something goes wrong for me in this game. Uh, but it is just another ballast system. Again, bring in water, release lead, etc. And it is built to go on there. But that's not to say that you couldn't, if you desired, want to attach it over here. I mean, it does still fit along the side. As you can see, it does sort of contour to the rounded bit. So you could have uh, double tanks along this way. It is quite cool. I do like the versatility of that. And actually, it is quite nice if you do have that. Because then you have these attachments points free uh, because for instance if you do attach like say the ballast to let me take off of this fin here if you attach this ballast you don't really have access to that point right there I mean technically you could but things would be clipping weirdly like so uh, but with this one, having it on that side, you do have access to that one then, if, of course, you have it in this sort of uh, arrangement, which is, again, just, you know, up to you. Now, the uh, submersible I've been playing around with, oh god, don't save this monstrosity, is the otter here, which I tried making by copying the image that was on the page for this um, particular mod. So it should hopefully be good. I mean, I have actually done some dives with this and I think I've gotten it to a state where I'm okay with it but I still it seems to like to flip on me every now and then but again that's more of my own incompetence because one thing you'll have to learn about this mod just like with the other submarine mod that we looked at it's kind of difficult to actually use these things because you have to control ballast, lead weight, etc. on this. So you're you're doing a lot of messing around with all your different ballast tanks etc. and it can get Oh boy, odd, <laughs> but still very fun. And I just love, you know, I guess you'd say, I mean, you don't really say flying a submarine, but what would you say for that? It's not a swimming either. Let's set current to here. I believe if I put make that a six, make you a five, that should put us in the ocean. There we go, lovely. Let us uh, just go down. Let's turn on our SAS, our resources. And of course, we need to turn on our uh, reactor so we have more than enough power for this thing. And as you can see, I've actually balanced it, I think, quite nicely uh, for when it drops into the water. It sits just below the water line, but we will start slowly, slowly sinking. And I've kind of through trial and error found that about 60 ballasts in the front with all the lead gone, all the lead gone from all of the ballast tanks, except for the center one. The center one, I still keep my lead inside. But if I put uh, like about 50 to 60 ballasts in the front tanks, I, I can tend to control this thing all right. So let's activate the engines, throttle up a bit, and you can see the glorious bubbles start to form. I think that's one of my favorite parts about the submarine mods. You get bubbles. <laughs> Who needs exhaust when you have bubbles? And there we go. SAS is a very good thing to have on with this thing, and so is uh, fine-tuned controls rather than normal controls. Oh god, my SAS is acting up. Okay, okay. Oh, all right, recover. Because <laughs> with the, the fine-tuned controls on, it actually seems to work okay. If you have the normal controls on, even holding down like W for a second or two too long, and all of a sudden your submarine will be flipping. It's kind of interesting. Uh, generally, I actually keep this thing about 50% thrust because otherwise it does get very finicky with its controls. But again, that's all something you gotta learn when you're playing around with these submersible mods. They are just difficult. Oh God, let's just turn on, on all the lights from there. We've got our different things. A lot of good spotlights. Let's actually go down to the bottom of the ocean, hopefully, and not die. With my luck, we'll die. But let us see. Oh god, I held that too long. We're too in too much of a dive. 
Granted, we should be, I think the bottom down here is at like 700 meters. So we actually do have a while. Let's throttle up. There we go, and see if we can get to the bottom of the ocean without killing ourselves. Now I should actually point out, if we IVA, we do have an internal view back here. It's a little spartan, but you know what, it's functional and good enough for the time being. I do like just the big sort of glass that we have here. You have a lot of visibility with this thing. Honestly, I wouldn't mind having this on a spacecraft. I think it'd be quite nice. Plus you have the built-in reactor and all. Though, if I, uh, does this one have ballast? Oh, oh God, oh, oh God, okay, I flipped it. <laughs> like I said, if you hold back a bit too long, it does like to flip. But again, that may just be my incompetence, but we're getting close to the bottom, I see it there. So let's throttle down a bit. I didn't want to suddenly crash. Now, of course, you have uh, your pitch and roll just like anything, so you can bank left and right. All right, let's see, let's see. We got slow throttle going now. And we're getting close. We can see the blue down there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Maybe, maybe for some of you guys, exploring the ocean isn't the most interesting thing ever, considering it is just barren, smooth ground that you don't even tell textures on until you're basically within hugging range. Uh, but yes, I quite enjoy these submersible things. I don't know, something about being underwater. I love. It's, it's, it's quite calming. All right, we can see the bottom now. We can actually start to see some texturing. Let's uh, throttle down, throttle down. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And just uh, angle ourselves so we have uh, the lights facing more on the bottom. There we go, there we go. We, we have reached the bottom of this part of the ocean. Oh God, oh God, oh God, we're, we're tilting too far down. Oh God, we're gonna crash. Oh no, oh, we're screwed. Yep, we're screwed. There went a light and one of my ballasts. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't pull up. It wouldn't pull up. Okay, well, yep. That's the submersible or submarines parts pack by uh, Rover Dude, the USI submarine pack to be specific. And we've made the auto submersible, which is now horribly off balance because I lost one of my ballast tanks. But that, that was on me, folks. That was on me. <laughs> Oh <laughs> well, yeah, if you would like to check out this mod for yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description as always, and I would definitely say to go have a look at it. It is just so much fun. It, again, does take a lot of uh, figuring out things to actually start to successfully pilot one of these. I mean, I've been playing around with it for about an hour or two, and that is as good as I've gotten. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a lot, and that seems to be a common feature with all of the submarine things that I've seen so far on the forums. But yes, they're uh, just a load of fun, so definitely go and have a gander. And of course, I do hope you have enjoyed this episode today, and that you do come back for the next. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends, and as always, have a good one. Now let's throttle up and away at, like, 20 meters per second. Later, folks!